Nerd Reactor, roll out. What's up, Reactorites? I'm John. I'm Mike. And this is it. Supergirl is finally back for its third season. And uh, last time, we have Monel leaving, and you know, pretty much it's kind of like a like a sacrifice. So Supergirl had to choose one or the other. So she chose to save the world, the universe, and um, Superman would be like, I don't know if I can do uh, do the choice that you did, because mm -hmm. you would probably have saved Lois Lane. Yeah, and that's that's why we have injustice. <laughs> <laughs> that is why we have injustice. Oh, that's Superman. He's willing to. It's like I guess that's not a Boy Scout thing to do, then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But Supergirl is the Girl Scout, so she's the <laughs> Uber Girl Scout. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, what is it? At the end of the episode, someone gets sent back. You know, like was it like years ago, right? And uh, so we're gonna find out hopefully what that alien species is on uh, this episode so let's check it out squad hitter Elysium Fields <laughs> not yet <laughs> oh oh no I just remembered what happened <laughs> <laughs> you were like what is this wait let's go oh yeah <laughs> oh is that who I think it is who do you think it is? <laughs> it's a, that's mom, right? The uh, real, the foster mom. Real mom. Because the real mom looks different. Oh, Remember the real mom is the uh, also the aunt that looks yeah. similar. But who's she? Uh, also the girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they cast, they change the cast. Uh, that would be weird. It was all a dream. Huh? Oh wow, they look. They oh wow! Look really at that. improved the uh, yeah. visuals, huh? That is a cool shot. Yeah, it looks crappy again. <laughs> <laughs> They're going after Optimus. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! no! Oh! What? What just happened? She just... She killed Optimus. <laughs> oh, man. And we're back to the, uh... Canada City. <laughs> <laughs> but we're in Los Angeles. Not anymore. Cool car chase. Very fast. Very furious. Is <laughs> that what you did there? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, she goes from being Little Miss Sunshine to... Well, Alex, basically. What? I'm not like that. Oh, come on, Alex. Your unrelenting seriousness is one of your best qualities. <laughs> This city would still be in ruin from those Daxonites. Nathan Petrelli. I thought it was restitution for what her brother did. Oh. What about, what about your brother, brother? Huh? What about your father? <laughs> you know, Edge, you are not as powerful as you think you are. Oh, no? Then what are we doing in my office? Well. That was creepy. <laughs> So, is that the CatCo board members? Yeah, I think I so. I know Lena was part of it. No. Collusion! <laughs> hey, look who it is. Oh, uh, Supergirl's been too busy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about the invasion. The statue dedication is this weekend. I'll do my best. Well, uh, we have <laughs> our assignments, right? That's it. Say to your best. That's it. What have you been doing? <laughs> they got three articles? Yes, they got three that's it. stories? That's it. <laughs> I'm buying Catco. I should get going. Yeah, um, brunch soon? Sure, whatever. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, goes by blood sport, which is not any blood sport I've ever heard of. <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme. Surprise, Supergirl! <laughs> Ooh! Oh. Force field around it. What Whoa. the hell is that? That watch is for emergencies only. I know what the watch is for, but th this feels like an emergency. What? <laughs> yeah. and, and you're one to talk, Guardian. Okay. He's still doing Guardian his job. means a lot to me. But so does James Olsen. Just fire her. You're fired. Card, don't do this. 
I quit. <gasps> Kara. Don't you walk out that door. <laughs> I think she walked out that door. <laughs> oh, damn it. Aluminum rods were just a cover. That was his real target. <laughs> the high pressure regulator. It says it right there. <laughs> Without forcing you to go to game nights or come to the bar, there was a burglary. There's always a burglary. <laughs> Your pity party has gone uninterrupted. My, my pity party? Who are you right now? <laughs> Cara Danvers doesn't quit. She quits the things that aren't important. <laughs> <laughs> If the woman you are about to marry was gone forever, what would you be doing? You'd be a wreck at work. And it's okay if you are. I'm not. <laughs> That's what humans do. Oh. And I'm better than that. Oh. I am not a human. I am a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Cara Danvers <laughs> is my favorite person. She saved me more times than Supergirl ever could, so just think about that while you're trying to get rid of her. I see, Mon Hell. That's my mom. So they did change the actress. Wow. I'm here, east side, you? West. I'll Again, it's suspicious. Okay. Yeah, look at that. What is he up to? Because my dad won't be there. Dealing with family issues that I can't imagine. So I just, I hope that I would just let it go. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Sleep. You have so many people who love you. Just think about how they can make our day good. And tell me how I can help. God, this episode is super corny. <laughs> Love you. You too. Forever. <laughs> oh God! What happened? You two, my favorite couple. <laughs> when Shan, get off the comms. <laughs> that blind girl had some moves. <laughs> she, she was like, oh, let me duck. <laughs> she did a cup of water. She was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not channel three. She can't breathe underwater. Really? Is it true? Uh oh, oh wow. Uh -oh. Not the statue. The statue's gonna kill the girl. Uh oh. Shot was. <laughs> the director sucks. Oh, oh no. no. Whoa. What the hell? Who is she? Oh, she actually crushes her daughter's skull. <laughs> Should do that pose too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know more than I do. You studied under Kat, and I mean, I trust you. And how often do you get to work with your best friend? Oh. Hey! You can't just leave me here. <laughs> what the hell? Is that the supposed to be the? Oh, that's a spaceship from the end of the last season, or another ship? Or is that? Maggie and I figured it out. We are going to have a really big wedding. Dad. The biggest, gayest wedding that <laughs> I've ever seen. If you will. To have you walk me down that aisle. Oh. <laughs> oh. So oh my God. I'm cry. If you cry, I'm gonna cry. And oh everybody no. here is gonna know that we actually can cry. <laughs> She does. She hey, does. look who it is. Ooh, shots. <laughs> shots, shots, shots. Won't even phase her. Uh-oh. Oh, what? Ooh. What? Hmm. What the hell? Yeah, so that was the premiere of season three, and uh, it's kind of a hit and miss for me. There are, like, some scenes that I really liked. Uh, let's talk about that first. Like my favorite scene in this, in this episode is um, Alex asking, you know, Martian Manhunter, you know, to be the one to walk her, you know, in the aisle for the wedding, and I was like, that was pretty touching. Yeah. And I, um, I'm like thinking, like, what's what about 
Dean Kane. What about the uh, her father, her real father? You know, he's still alive. Yeah, couldn't couldn't they try to do something? <laughs> right, like somehow, like they just kind of left that storyline open. I guess mm-hmm. are they ever gonna revisit it and finally like close it? Yeah, like I, if I were Alex, I would be like, let's wait until we get my dad out, <laughs> my real dad, so that we can have both dads. Both dads. Yeah, we have two dads. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, what if, what if she just asks, like, I have a favor to ask of you, Martian Manhunter, if you can just transform into my dad, <laughs> would I be messed up? She transforms into DK? Yeah. Oh, man. It's like, and he was like, oh, hopeful, you want to add? Yeah, that was, that was a good scene. What was your other uh, favorite scene? Uh, just the, um, like, uh, the new character, uh, you know, being introduced. It's kind of like weird, You're like, oh, here's a new character. And it's like, you know... She's going to be, like, the mom. She's going to have a bigger role. And I think her name is Odette Fair. Not Odette Fair, but that's the other guy from <laughs> Deuce Bigelow. But something like that. Um, but she was in, like, the movie The Unborn. And she was also in, I think, Dewey Cox. The story of Dewey Cox. And was it Walk Harder? Or yeah, Walk like Hard. That? Walk Hard, yeah. Yeah, she was in that one. And, uh, yeah, she was, she was, like, hot in that one. So I was like, yowza. Yeah. Um, but I like the kind of the teasing she's squeezing squeezing that uh what is it that pylon or a tower or whatever mm-hmm. that's on, on her daughter so is she is she that alien that was at the end of the last season i don't know i mean it seems like where would she have this power from but then why would she be so surprised she has this power maybe she's a late bloomer maybe yeah like she just landed and then like she never really needed to use her strength until that time yeah, and yeah, so that's going to be interesting. How does that play out, you yeah. know? So, like, a person with super strength, would they know that they're hurting things or whatnot, like moving objects around? Or let's say you're doing groceries. Like, wouldn't you, oh, this is so light. You know? <laughs> or, or maybe it's during a traumatic experience. That's when uh, the powers are heightened. Kind of like if you're a mutant yeah. and, uh, you know, you're under stress, under duress. Yeah. And uh, your power is just manifest. Yeah. I, I don't know. We're, we're, I'm pretty sure she's going to be like one of the main characters for this season. I think I, I, I haven't read a lot of the new stories about this season. So. Yeah. I, uh, what, what I think, my, my thing is I don't like to be spoiled too much. I don't like to read too much into like what's going to happen. So uh, don't spoil it for us. Uh, if, you knew, if you do know the answer, this is just us thinking about what's going to happen. Yeah, and then uh, one thing I noticed about this episode, because the, the name Bloodsport, besides being a John Claude Van Damme film, I know I know that character because I remember I had those comics. I think there was like a run that was called Bloodsport, and this is when like comics were getting edgy in the nineties, mm-hmm. and then like he actually had blood, like a lot of blood in there, mm-hmm. and he was he kind of reminded me of uh, he's basically kind of like Deathstroke, really. Oh, like yeah. He's an assassin, the hired assassin. He has like a mask, you know, and he's got the eye slits and i think it's a, he's white i think it's like a white suit and i think it had like a cross on his chest i can't remember uh but he was basically like a mercenary and he was just like attack superman and it was kind of weird i mean you, just like a normal man a <laughs> normal guy uh-huh. <laughs> just like fighting superman or, yeah. but you know uh, that was this character and he you know they i guess he's caught now it's yeah. silver. That's it. That's it. So she's like a <laughs> villain of the week. Yeah. So uh, it looks like Supergirl's still doing that, but then you still have the overarching story. So right now we're introduced to uh, uh, Nathan Petrelli. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever his character is in this show, what is his, it? His name's Edge. Edge. Yeah. Like you know, like the the guitarist from YouTube, <laughs> Edge, or the WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah. This is because Edge. He, Edge. Yeah, wow. his name's Edge. <laughs> okay, all right. So <laughs> Edge, he's got right. his ringtone. It's like you think you know me. <laughs> you think you know me. You think you know him? Well, yeah, because now he's Nathan Petrelli. <laughs> so yeah, so there is maybe there might be some promise with this, but I'm not feeling the the character yet on like his potential, and so far he hasn't been captivating enough for me yeah. as a uh, villain. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. What happened to Maxwell Lord? Uh, he might be doing other projects, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, I, like, I like Maxwell Lord. He was yeah. in the first season of Supergirl, so he's just, poof, gone. Yeah. He and then they made way for Lena in season two, where you're like, is she good? Is she bad? And I'm not sure. But now it looks like they're sticking with her being a like a good 
a good hero. Yeah, let's right? get to the not, get... not so flattering. Part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Like the uh, I don't know. It's just for the dialogue for this episode. You just like you um, mentioned corny. So there are like some sappy moments, but then there are also uh, like the moments that I'm I'm not a big fan of. Like when the CW superhero shows do the uh, melodrama, where it comes to like moments where you can turn it around you can't talk about feelings but then you're you're just distancing yourself but then you're just acting it's I, like I, I, I think I understand. like so, do people like do people really act like this but i'm pretty sure they do but do we want to watch it do you want to watch a show that has that yeah and then like one of the things that like it's always like a, a cliche in these shows is like something happens and whatever happens affects you and then you're like oh you know just something right now and you're like oh well what you, it happened with uh the car sister and she's like well when you're ready to talk about this then you know we'll talk about it and yeah. it's like what the fuck man? so we're <laughs> so we're pretty much acting like um you know the guy you know the guys and you know alex and when and uh, you know Martian Manhunter, and okay, let's give her a space. Yeah. But then Alex is fed up with it, so I kind of feel like Alex now is like, come on, come yeah. on, snap out of it. Yeah. But then it's like when you lose someone, but then you have a really good support. Yeah, she has a really good support system. Mm-hmm. So it's not like when you're like by yourself. If, let's say you're a Batman, you know, you're a loner all the time. But Batman, if something bad, you just still. Yeah, He's I, still Batman. Yeah, and I, and I understand like what they were trying to convey with this episode because it's like if you've ever been in a relationship and then gotten out of a relationship, like one of the things that helps you cope is just like dive into your work. Like, just this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work. But she's she's this. focused at Supergirl instead yeah. of her other work at Catco. <laughs> yeah, and then like the whole like her just like being so like abrasive to everybody is just so weird, and it's like. It wasn't even that long. It was a season. Like, come yeah. on. Like, I don't know. They could have, they could have planned this out better. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like they could have done it for me. Uh, for her to really feel that Monel's away and she feels like guilt about it, just to show that she has guilt about it, and like inner dialogue or something like that, or or uh, something else, but not just like lashing out at other people. That just feels very petty. Yeah. Especially for when you're like the main character, you're the hero, uh, maybe a side character. Even, I don't even like it when side characters do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think they could have done this a lot better in terms of uh, structuring it. Yeah, and... I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of a show or a movie where someone has lost someone, but they sh- they present it in such a good way where you're like, man, I really feel for this person and his, this person's life is crap. I'm trying to think too. Like, I keep thinking like of other big, like, series that have done like similar arcs but then they the the benefit that they have is that they've done it for seasons so mm-hmm. they'd have a romance or love interest that happened over a season like i think mm-hmm. of true blood uh true blood bill and um suki mm-hmm. stackhouse like that's a long like drawn out like couple seasons like i can't remember if it was like season four i think or mm-hmm. five where she finds out like something like something Bill did and mm-hmm. then she's like oh my god I can't believe you and then it's like she's heartbroken and then you're like okay well I can understand it now you know because he, he kept he kept this secret from her and then now it's like it's revealed and you're like oh <gasps> oh yeah alright let's say let's just bring up Injustice the yeah. first Injustice game where the Joker tricks Superman in, into killing Lois Lane yeah. and he becomes devastated because yeah. Lois Lane is dead and it was him that um that helped uh you know bring her into space right yeah and then she's dead and that that is like whoa yeah that was his uh like uh, mental state where he thinks that that's uh, something else mm-hmm. so indirectly he was responsible for lewis lane's death and but i still don't like when superman becomes a bad guy because he's a dick <laughs> so i don't think i like it when any character <laughs> changes like that. Yeah. Uh, it's like, even like in Superman, I'm like, snap out of it, Superman. It's like, come on. And in Injustice 2, Kara comes, and I love Kara in Injustice 2. She's like, soups. You know, like she came to be like um, the big sister to him, and he's a dick. <laughs> so it's like, and it, it breaks my heart because she has hope. And he's like, you know what? If you're not with me, then you're against me. He's like, really? Come on, we're family. <laughs> you know, give give me some wiggle room here. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just not really a fan of these, uh, I don't even know what you can call it, these characters that just 
it feels out of character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, but it, I know what they're trying to do. I just think they just didn't do it at a, in a, a good job of doing it. And then like I don't know, I don't know where this season's gonna go because this, this this whole thing. Okay, that the mom changed. Yeah, the actor for the mom is different yeah. now. Yeah, so she's different. Yeah. And then she can't breathe underwater. She can't breathe underwater. Um, I can kind of see that because there have been Superman stories where he can. He goes into space, but he needs, uh, you know, a breathing apparatus. Uh, for example, the Superman cartoon, he has a spacesuit. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what was it? There's one that you showed me where he's in space, and then Green Lantern needs to uh, create, like, a makeshift uh, helmet. helmet for him. Yeah. So, yeah, um, those are my thoughts. Those are our thoughts on the Supergirl. And I know there's going to be a bunch of you that's going to have different feelings about this, and you're going to be like, but... But guys, uh, you know, that's how she feels. You got to understand that she just lost somebody that she really loved. And I, I get that. But I'm just not a fan of it when it comes into entertainment and and all that. So, there, you know, there are people that we've dealt with. I'm pretty sure you've dealt with someone like that just lashes out. And even when that happens, we're like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so not a fan of it, but let us know. And also a Patreon. Oh, yeah, so if you guys want to get early access to our other shows like TVD, uh, Vampire Diaries, also SPN, Supernatural, and even uh, R- RVD. RVD? <laughs> yeah, RVD. RVD, the wrestler <laughs> slash uh, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a Riverdale. Uh, you guys can uh, help uh, and, uh, join us on Patreon and uh, support us there. Everything you guys donate really helps us out in terms of getting a more episodes out for you guys and you know more content uh you know just by you guys donating you also get early access to those episodes so you guys can see them before everybody else so thank you guys for you know participating and helping supporting us yeah, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel right over here right there <laughs> with that said i'm john i'm mike we'll see you guys next time